is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, August the 5th. It's been a harrowing couple of days. Uh, we're looking at the market uh, just tumbling every day, Thursday, Friday, and now today. Has, have we made some kind of an internal? Uh, we'll talk about that, but I have uh, we have a caller right off the bat. We've got Costa in Boston. Costa, how are you? Good, Basil. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. Uh, you would India, like how low? How low is it going? Where's the buy? So, uh, Costa, I have to ask you this question. Are you talking about the kind of buy that says I can buy and hold as it goes to another new phase to the upside? Or are you talking yes. about a trade? You're talking about a trade or a longer term no, position? A long term investment. So, if you're talking about an investment, um, I think that the semiconductors still have some work to do. They've had, when you think about it, NVIDIA, which has been the absolute star, NVIDIA NVDA trading right now down 7 at 99.60. It did hit 90.69 as the low this morning, trying to come off the low. Um, if you're looking for a longer term, uh, no, let's call it a buy and hold, even though there might be positions within that that you want to take as taking off some of the position or adding, but just to try to buy a core position. In the area that I'm looking at right now, the low that was made back in April, which is at 70, uh, 75.61, and the high of 140.76 on the 20th of June, and we've been looking at this as if there was a some kind of a, a consolidation that was going to take place, and a lot depended on how it held uh, the 120, 118 area, that was the first level of support. And then it took that out, went down to the 107s, tried to bounce, went to 120, and now it's come down. If you're looking for a longer-term buy, if you're prepared to put up with, and I think that that area below 80 is a target over the next couple of weeks, and even if we've made some kind of an internal low today, and we have to wait for the residual low, I'll talk about that in a, in a moment, Um I would have to say, are you prepared to put in steps or just you want to get your position and that's it? Do you want to step in like a bit here and a bit lower down and then another bit? Or you want to looking for something that says this is the most this is the area that should hold as really good support. I want to I'll, I want to wait to put my money there. How would you want to do it? Sure, I don't know. I'm just trying to get the lowest price possible. Okay, so if you're going for the lowest price possible, the 200 period moving average of 87.56 is sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, let me show you the weekly chart, the daily chart. I'm going to pull this out a little bit so you can see it in a much longer term uh, chart formation. Everything about this says that, yes, it could be bounces along the way, but the 87 area allows you to have would you have what would you have as a would you have a stop in place so what what would you do would, it, would an eight percent or a ten percent is that too much what would be your stop in other words what's what would your risk be yeah i don't know you got me basil i have no idea i'm just okay the, the lowest price possible okay you want the lowest price possible if that's the case i'm going to say Whole, uh, the the low today of ninety point ninety six I think is is pretty would have been pretty good for a bounce. But if you're looking for something that says I'm ready to start another big move, I don't know about going back to one hundred forty point seventy six all time high. But even if it went from uh, where it is now at eighty seven, or let's just say it go, goes down below eighty, um, I think a twenty a twenty point rally to twenty five points would be pretty good. So, and that would be a very nice percentage. And then if it's holding, you could just keep holding. So I'm going to suggest hold off a little bit in your in your mind. Give me a call if you see this trading at 87. It is at 98. So 87 is 20 points, uh, 10 points below where it is right now. 
But I think that that's reasonable. I don't think that this is the low for NVIDIA. NVIDIA uh, has had everything going for it. I think it's going through a phase now where there are going to be a lot of uh, negative, negative things, even if it bounces. So I'm going to say to you, the 87 area is where I would say to you, st you could start a position, but I would like to see how it gets there and when it gets there. So could you give me a call if you get, see it getting to 87? Um, okay. Right, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere below 88, and we'll start looking at it and say, okay, what is the what are the weekly chart telling me? The monthly chart is still really good, so it has to be one step at a time. But I, I would hesitate to do anything now if it was more more than just a trade. So I hope that helps you, and let's let's talk again if we can see it pull back further. Thank you very much, Basil. Thank you for calling, Costa, and uh, good luck with our NVIDIA look and analysis. Okay. I'll, okay. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. So, folks, let's just do this. I want to go through what I'm looking at right now. We've had this is the largest cash position we've had in quite some time. We've been negative for some time, very negative. The SMHs, the semiconductors, uh, the, uh, the Dow itself made that round number, 41,376.00 round number, all-time high on the 18th of July. Said so that has to be something important. Wow, it is. And we've got the one-to-one -one of that peak, B minus, that, that bounce that occurred back in uh, late July. It went right through the, the left side, dreaded H support level. Now it's gone down. And uh, on Saturday, on Friday was a Chapman Wave Red. Um, it's called Roman Candle Pattern. And uh, it said that if we were to close below the low of Friday, that, that says if it does that two out of three sessions, that's a very serious thing. So, of course, we plunge. And right at this very second, not even an hour into the trading day, we pr produced yet another Chapman Wave Roman candle right there. But I don't want to talk about it. It's a daily candle. What I am going to say is that the 38,090 area, so under, under 38,150 to 38,000, that for me would be some kind of a target now. Are we looking at this? Oops, I don't, I don't know what Microsoft did this and changed the uh, background to a little dog. It wasn't there earlier on. It keeps changing. Um, anyway, so a cute little dog. Anyway, so the Dow's down 935. Look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart says, you know, what are you worried about? We're just back in the rectangle formation. Well, we're worried about the, the, the confluence of so many things going on, as well as possible Iran, uh, great friction there. So let's just go through one at a time. The daily Dow is in a sell mode. The MACD is weak. This, the relative strength, this is gray line right here, is weak. The, the on-balance volume has come back from uh, a, a good bounce to pulling back. It's not negative right now, but it's pulled back. And the stochastics are 37%. If this is a more serious move, then I suspect that the stochastic will go to just under 20% into the teens or maybe even the single digits. That's why I'm going to say right now, I'll do this right as we're speaking. I showed this to subscribers on the upside, and now I'm going to talk about it on the downside for my market overview, my all long market view on Saturday, on Friday afternoon. So I spoke about this and I said, I always talk about the Cap Wave Dark News Index with internal lows and residual lows and internal highs and residual highs. And I had said, I'm thinking that that was an internal high at that round number high that was on the 18th of uh, uh, May. And then we had this V-shaped bounce and it failed just under that. And that to me looks like a residual high. Well, now if you look at the low, I don't think that we possibly be could, we could be looking at an internal low and have a bounce and then a residual loss. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. So I wanted to show you this. I'm going back to this chart right here. There's been a little problem. I think we have, <coughs> wow, there must be tremendous selling because I haven't seen Chase Station <coughs> with delay for a long time, hardly ever happens. Uh, pretty robust system. So now we've got Chapman Wave Dark News Index, uh, and I drew in this on, on Friday when I was after the market closed. I did this for subscribers. I do an overview every week, weekend, uh, besides my daily newsletter. Uh, and what I said is I'm putting this in. It isn't interest rate related. And this is the first time this has happened. This is the first time that the markets have gone down in a, a long time where if you have a good, well-balanced bond portfolio, you would have seen a fabulous rise in the bonds and that would have alleviated, which is what happens back in 1987, back in 2009, all these huge uh, sell-offs. Very often the bonds save the day. If you, uh, if you have a good mixed portfolio, you don't feel the damage nearly as much as if you just in, say, stocks or just in bonds. So now what's happened is this is pulled back. There's a trend line that I drew in. I don't like on this particular chart. I really don't like to draw anything on other than what I have, uh, which is based on the internal low, residual low, and these rectangles at the highs. And what has happened since the beginning of since March of 2024 into May and into this uh, May? Wait, where was it? Yeah, May. oh, I put that as May. That was not. That was right here. So uh, I typed it in incorrectly. I didn't. I was looking and saying, "What on earth did I do?" Yeah, that was a seven seven eighteen, right there, uh, July the 18th. Is that this wasn't interest rates related? It was other things. And look what's happened. We've gone right down to this trend line. I, did, I don't like to draw these trend lines, but I do it when I think it's necessary. Could have drawn one in there. I didn't. And it took it out and went below it. Um, I, I'm watching to see very closely how we come off, how the close is today. All right? That's most important. Now, let's go to this. Um, yeah. So I've done the Dow. I've said that the daily chart is in a sell mode. But look, the weekly chart this is not even an hour into the, this week. So I can't talk about the weekly chart as if it's Friday at 4 o'clock. But so far, the 9 is still way over the 14. 
even though the date is gone S on intraday, it's gone to a sell mode on the 914 experiential moving averages. But look at this. It's still way above. So either we've got a lot more to go to the downside or we're starting to build a base. And that's I, I'm thinking building a base of support. That's the way I'm thinking right now, even though it looks horrible. And based on the monthly chart, yeah, it's still a peak E, a leg E and a peak E if there's no high above 41,376.00 this month. So, so far, there's nothing really wrong. We've still got our core very long-term longs in our diamonds. We've taken, we, we, we are UDRW, we ended just briefly. We aren't in anything right now there. I, I want to be adding, I thought this morning would be a good idea right at the open to go along. And then I thought, you know, there's just too much going on right now. And even though the VIX index was screaming, and that to me says we are really close to at least a bounce, um, you have to let this play out. The day is young. Now let's go to the S&P. I'm taking a little time here because the, it's very hmm, it's very important that the parameters I'm looking at, I'm doing this for myself as well as for you, the parameters that I'm looking at are actually parameters that hmm, slow, that can conform to both this, uh, the, the, the technical specifics that I've got as well as to the emotional area that is really very important, and that has to do with the volatility index. So here's the S&P down 154. This is the cash at 51.90. It's gone to lower lows. This is a trough A, trough B. This is a, a leg C to the downside right now. The 200 period moving average of 5,073 is just an icon to look at. There's no guarantee that it has to get there. But as I say, I, I'm looking at this as a stepwise motion. The uh, 914 is very, very weak. The MACD is very weak. The relative strength is weak. Then the stochastics are only at twenty two percent. It could still go down to the teens and then the single digits. So this is all the daily chart sell mode. Now I'm very close to saying there's a, a, almost a sell signal in the weekly chart from the peak E. I can't do that. It's a candle that it closes on Friday at four o'clock. So I have to wait a little bit. And the monthly chart. You remember that resistance we were looking at that internal. Uh, I call it the inside track uh, residual. There we go. Inside track resistance area and it got pulled back with a doji candle so this just says to me that monthly chart must be respected it looks it still looks very good it's a very ugly candle that's all okay let's go to qqq so what levels am i looking at 5072 resistance and i would even go so far as to say 552 oh maybe 5250s as a rebound is something that i'd be looking at but in the meantime, let's go to the QQQ. That's the index 100. Now, here's the question. Um, the 503.52 inside track repellent zone right on the 10th of July, where the price started to come down due to dreaded H. That's that where it fails at a peak A or B and takes out the left side. Load. It's done this so many times. Now, what's really fascinating is that the 200 period moving average of 433, where it is right now, um, it's gone below that. It's gone 423.45. But the MACD is weak. The stochastic is only at uh, 18, 16%. Uh, the unbalanced volume is very weak. It is getting close to some kind of a rebound area, but only a rebound. I don't see this as a low. Monthly chart, I have to, uh, weekly chart, I have to call that a peak F, more than a likely B. And we've gone through resistance. I'm, like, I'm taking that away. It's just messy. Let's get rid of that. Okay, and it's come, and it's, I'm getting rid of this as well. And what is it doing? Uh, the, the, really, the most important area of support that has to hold is 413.07 on a closing basis. That's the low that was made on the 18th, the week of the 18th of April. And the monthly chart is a peak C. It says that in 2024, we should go above 503.52 for a leg D. Uh, we'll see if that's going to happen. IWM. So this was. Remember, people were talking about the rotation. I said at this particular moment, there's a rotation. But a rotation, remember, you can't have the soldiers leading without the generals. And that's basically what happened. So the pullback from the 228.63 high that was made, and we had this as a long, we took some really nice uh, small, uh, small profits. Uh, but the big one just got taken out today. Uh, we took a little bit of a loss. I didn't have to take a loss. We could have got out. With a gain, but I wanted that entry that was at about 20, uh, what was I think it was 204, 
uh, two or three point fifty two. So we took um, a four. Uh, I think it was a seventy seventy nine. Yes, we took a, a less than a four point loss. But the 200 period moving average is going to be really important. How does it hold? What happens next? So the Russell 2000, that's the small caps, the 2000 acted way better in the last move up uh, than it had for a long time. It broke out, did everything you wanted. But I would said I'm a little nervous about this doji candle. That's why we're raising the, uh, the stops and why we took off positions that we had as trading positions besides the core. And so it's no more long. We've got to get out of that a lot. We're no more long to make the clip of that. And it's got the caps to caps. I think, you know, two hydrogen reverses. I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen it quite as dramatic as this. Hydrogen reverses making the whole area of the core five really important to close above in the next few. So I'll be back in a moment. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Yeah, so I had a question about what, what letters did I have for the 10 minute charts if there were peaks at the very top and you had a peak E uh, at eight o'clock right there. That was eight o'clock. That was no, an F at uh, 20 past eight on the uh, 731 and then at 210 on August the 1st, the peak E, slightly lower than that, and then slightly higher than all, both of them, we had a peak E at 950 at uh, 5,675. And then it went pink very quickly, actually, uh, the nine period moving average, and you had almost the one to one to the downside. Uh, most importantly, it stayed pink, stayed pink. There was just a moment it went green earlier on. Uh, it went green at about seven o'clock let me just give you this exact thing uh, 820 on the second it went green and then it was in the rectangle formation and boom it pulled back and then uh it just the big move down this pink was at four o'clock so on the fourth of august the morning uh last night it gapped down and then pink, 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 pink. And then early this morning, about 2 o'clock, there was this double bottom. Tried to went to peak A, B, and then failed to peak C. Went back to pink and has been hopping around ever since. So this whole area between 5,100, let's call it, and say 52. I'd even go to the 200 period moving average of 53.12. That could be your trading band for the next, uh, at least the next quite a number of hours all right so in the meantime back at the ranch what we are looking at is i'll talk about it in a moment i'll come back to this inside residual uh, like an earthquake where you make a uh, have an earthquake and then a little while later you have the aftershock and the aftershock can be just as bad worse or nothing at all and that's what i look at is internal uh, resistance and internal support. So here we are, the IWM is pullback shop. I think there's a problem now with the IWM. I could have immediately said very early this morning, said, look, make the stop, widen the stop. But I found over the years, you know, if you change your original, even though there's a, there's a change in pattern, you, yes, if the change in pattern warrants a change in your stops or buy stops, that's important. But just to do it because it wasn't hit and yet everything's coming down and maybe, no, I don't do the maybes. I say, look, we're out, we're out. You can always get back in. So it took a little bit of a loss, a very small percentage loss there. Uh, but it was a fantastic move, and I know many people took really good gains in the Russell 2000. Have a look at this. This is the IWN for Nancy. Um, IWN gone, has gone right to the 200 period moving average after the peak F top in the in the daily. Is it a peak E or a B in the uh, weekly? There was a one-to-one -one expansion, didn't quite get there. And this is the iShares Russell 2000 value ETF, and I'm beginning to think that. If one goes for uh, one of the indexes and there's a slight, slightly favorable uh, pattern in the value or if there's a, the dividend is slightly higher, I'm going to say choose between the two or we can have both of them, but I'm not going to rule it out. Sometimes I say, you know, for the slight percentage differences, in this particular instance, the, the, even chart pattern wise, it was just enough to say, you know what, treat this as more an individual, a separate thing because it's slightly, it's a, different enough. Even though it's slight, it's different enough in the IWM Russell 2000 and the iShares IWN, the same thing, but the value ETF. In other words, the stocks that have all value stocks are the ones that make up the composite. Now, this is going to be very important because you've got. You've got the TLT. Now, it might be overbought, right? It had a spike to 99.93. So there are a lot of things that are saying the emotional and technical side can be put together here. And that says that the emotional side with the VIX index pulling back so sharply from the intraday high on a Monday went overseas the news. You can imagine how many people. I believe there are a lot of uh, brokerage houses that are down. Right now, I, to this trade station, it seems to be acting really well. I have no problem with it right this moment. And within that, uh, what I am looking at is that the red TLT, red red doji candle in leg D, leg C in the uh, weekly chart, and 
having failed yet to make a leg B in the month, he says, lower yields uh, cannot be ruled out as if something that is it's something that is in the, in the overall spectrum of all the different ingredients that we're looking at in this potpourri of market activity. So that's important. And if you look at the U.S., that's the uh, this is the dollar thirty. Sorry, this is the thirty-year T-bond continuous contract pulling back from the daily high and broke above the 128 high that was made back in I don't remember if it was late December early January of this year and uh, it went all the way to today's high of 126.27 now that doesn't make sense uh, did, did that get smoothed out that high was 122 and uh, 230 seconds so today's high, 126. Wait, wait, how can, oh, 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 where it is now. Sorry, the the high of, of the, no, that's right, 126 and 830 seconds went higher than this high right here, the week of the 28th of January, of December. Oh, that was 126 and two sec 230 seconds. Yeah, what happens is, this is a continuous contract, so I'm just putting 126, and it gets moved out, and then the price changes. That's what happened. So it went higher, and now it's a little bit lower, uh, but most importantly, it tested that left side high, did a beautiful jab wave inside wedge target repellent line touch uh, last week, and then this week it went above it. So it's it's it really completed everything that it needed to do, and the MACD uh, in the weekly chart is still strong. Stochastics at 87%. That's strong. Unbalanced volume is strong. It isn't overbought. And the 9 over the 14 is very good. So that says yields could still go a little bit higher. Uh, sorry. The bonds could go a little higher. Now let's look at the yields. The TBT. So the TBT took out the 200 period exponential moving average. The weekly chart and uh, down 23 at uh, 29.66, that's 2.966 percent, and you've got your dreaded H in the monthly chart. It took out the left side low of uh, December, but this is the month. It's very young. There's a lot more months to go. So let's just say it went to peak A, then a peak B, and now it's that's a B minus because it took out that left side low. We're going to be watching this really closely. So in the overall spectrum, what I am looking at here is. The weakness that we were anticipating, and I did not trade that very well for subscribers, I'm sorry. I, I nailed everything in terms of what was going on, but as trades, did not put the trades on. We lost this beautiful trade at exactly the exact low of the day of, of the move, that 126.20, oh, sorry, 26. Let me just get this right here. 0.60, I believe. No, no, it was 21.60. There it is. 21.60 in the SOXS. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So, uh, just the SOS, which is the three times short, the uh, seven conductors uh, hit 40 round number today. It's now trading at 35.39. Let's just see if that VIX index has bounced back a little bit. The volatility index at 42.08. Wow, what a dip from 65.73. Uh, we're going to be watching this very closely. Okay, so let's just go back now. So the gold, GC, you would have thought that on a day like this, especially with talk with Iran and a whole bunch of things, that the gold would have been up to the moon, but it's not. It's down 35 at 24.34. Um, and that was, look, the left side, if you check the left side to the right side here, that rally on the round about the 17th of July to the 2540s and then big pullback and then running again to the 2528 was it 2522.5 level on the 2nd of August look the technicals were much weaker so it's pulling back month the weekly chart still in a trading band nothing to see look at silver silver acted way weaker and then it had a bounce off the 200 period moving average, and then it plunged down even lower. So we took our profits in our uh, core mining. Uh, we're out there. We'll have to look at it again. New mine mining, as I said on Friday, was doing way, way better. It has a big, big pullback right here. But this is probably one of the leaders of the gold group that I can find over the weekend when I was going through them. Um, New mine mining NEM down two at 46.61 and needs to hold the 44s otherwise it could uh, keep going down uh, further but here's the gdx this is a very interesting look at this the gdx big plop to the downside uh, at 34.92 down a dollar 55 also within the rectangle of the weekly chart and the monthly charts in leg d so you can expect some kind of a pullback but uh, that's Kind of strange, isn't it? Especially when the dollar look at the, look what happened to the dollar on Friday. Look what's happening to the dollar today, plunging down at 102.53, down 69 uh, below the key support level in the weekly chart. Nine period moving average is pink. Uh, MACD is good. This this is not so good. So what I'm looking at here is um, so then I had a couple of questions. I just want to go backwards here. AEM, yep, I'll look at that. But I had a question right here. Um, oh, I hope I can find it. 
Tiki wanted to know. Oh gosh. Oh, got to go through. Let me just go through this slowly. Okay, not there, not there, not there, not there. Maybe they're here with EMP. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, uh, I've got question. Ooh, taking a little time, eh? Okay, all working seamlessly. Okay. So, uh, uh, Peaky, I'm going to have to try to find you. You had a question then. I wanted to answer it. Now I can't find the question. So, AEM is, um, ang where did it go? There it is. It is uh, Agrico Eagle Mines down 2.48 to 72.63. Gosh, I, I haven't got this noted lately, but of course I've done all the goals, um, all, all the ones that I follow. Peak A, A, B, C, goes to a D. Double tops, pulls back, and then pops to an E at 78, around the 78 area, 78.16, and it's pulled back. Weekly chart is uh, peak ABC, and it has DEF. Okay, that's a G. All right. So this is what I'm going to be saying. In the Anglo-American, I don't know if you've still got it. Is your question uh, just right now uh, doing well, good news, long and strong. I added a 69.50 earlier. Okay. I was going to say to you, you've already done what I wanted because it looks like it, the way you asked the question, um, doing well, meaning that you're probably in it. I'm just going to say that it could have a digestive phase. That's kind of what it looks right now in the daily chart. I don't think the weekly chart is going to be impacted unless it closes under 66. And I don't see the, the, the gold stocks that have held well should continue to be the bellwethers in terms of gold itself and the reaction and reaction of the gold miners. So if they're holding well now, they should still hold well. Um, and when the when gold comes back again, they should be the, the, the high flies. They should really move very quickly. So you're in it in the 69s of 7270. But I am going to say if this is a trade, then I would consider if it takes out today's low of 6972, at that point I, I would – definitely have a very tight stop. Why? Because if it takes it out, there's a chance that gold itself is going to be pulling back, the GDX is going to be pulling back, and that will affect AEM. So that was the, the one question there. Now, what would I like to see if I was long? Uh, we aren't long this. Um, at 72.59 AEM, I would like to see by Friday at least one test of the 79.50s. Uh, that's two points higher. 79, did I say? I mean, 74, 50. So that's two points higher. Just the test of it says, okay, now the weekly chart can go into a sideways consolidation. XLE, now this is fascinating because I've been asked about the uh, XLE and, and uh, many of the energy areas for quite some time. And I've been saying, I can see bounces, but I don't see anything yet that gets me to say, okay, let's buy it. Not yet. In XLE, you can see drop below all the key support levels. Um, this is the S&P Select Energy Spider. A lot's going on here, folks. You've got to realize because in these circumstances, you would normally see, I, just for the moment, you asked me about X, uh, XLE. I'm just going to go to Raytheon. To see, look, Raytheon is down $1.76. Uh, General Dynamics, down huge, down 10 um, What was the other one? LMT. Let's go to LMT. That is Lockheed Martin. Uh, made a high today, all-time high, in fact, at 562.60, but it's down at the 540 level. So you can see this is a very unusual market in so many ways. That's the reason why I said when we got that rally in the Russell 2000 that we've got to treat it with respect that I didn't think that it would test the low that it took out this morning, which was at uh, uh, so, uh, the 200, no, sorry, the 190 Eight area, and um, now IWM is at 200, so it's actually holding quite well considering, but I want to be very selective saying each sector, I want to do each sector independently because, look, dollar and gold going down together? I mean, something's wrong with this picture. The market uh, tanks from Wednesday, Thursday, Monday, I oh, say Thursday, Friday, Monday, and yet the dollar is where the dollar coming down should have been a boost for the market. So everything's different. So the XLE uh, isn't a buy right now. I'm going to say in my reading, because I'm trying to do sector by sector, not yet. 
Will it be a buy if it's been stolen and kind of in the 85 to, I don't want to get to 83, 85 to 84 area? Let's see if it has a bit of a bounce tomorrow. Uh, I'll keep my analysis. All the technicals are very weak right now. I'd have to say no. I'll be right back. Dow's down. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello, folks. I just I wanted to quickly see here uh, questions. Uh... No, this is not anything to do with the rogue wave. We've, the rogue wave goes to highs. Not necessarily all-time highs, but at least the recovery highs where it just suddenly pops up. It was going negative, 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 and then there's this one big pop-up at that same bar, closes at the, at the low of that bar, um, and uh, and then goes down like it was before. It's just a sudden, it's like a like your uh, sign at the beach says high tide at noon, 12.06, you're putting your blankie down, and you've got your dark glasses, you've got your suntan lotion, and splash, there's this big wave. It just didn't see the sign because you look back and the tide's going out. So that's that's the rogue wave. So the uh, E-mini is down 147. I suspect there's going to – I would prefer that there's one more sell-off, a scary sell-off, and then we get a close towards the high of the that our last hour. It doesn't have to be the high of the day, but the last hour. That's different. That, to me, is kind of the sign of the internal internal low, meaning it can go up. But it isn't all done because it still has to make a residual, a residual loan. That low can be either just above, right on, or just below that, that previous low. Look, let me just go to this chart right now, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And it, it always looks like a U, uh, sorry, like a inverted, like an H, really. 
They are. So this is the pattern that we're looking at. Go to the Dow, INDU, only apply it to the Dow. There, it makes this cup formation at the top, little mini cup formation right there. Right there in May, May the week of the 15th, then March the 20th. And at the bottom, we make a, a sharp rally. Then it comes back, could make higher lows, could be a series, or it could make like here, yeah, low lows. But it becomes internal low and residual low. And that it could be anything from uh, a week to actually a couple of weeks. I'm suspecting this is one of those, uh, it, it takes a little time to roll over, make that arch formation. But the low that we saw today, if that's not taken out today, and tomorrow we have a bit more of a bounce and the Dow closes quite well, then you say, hey, short term, bit of a rally. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great programming. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. See you tomorrow.